Thank you. All right, we're here in the Niner locker room with Niner punter Mitch Wisnowski. And, Mitch, uh, you've been one of the more valuable players the last couple of weeks. This week you pinned him at the two. You pinned him at the six. I think you pinned him at the 13. What is the key to the touch putt, the touch punt, to to drop it inside the 20? And and because these are some of the quiet, quietest, most pivotal plays in the game, really. Um, I think it's just sort of finding that balance between, you know, making the return and make a tough decision, maybe at the seven or eight, and then hopefully if he leaves it, the gunners are down there to make a play and. Um, if he catches it, you know, you still get the, the ball down at around like the seven or the eight. So I think it's just sort of finding that that balance of not being too greedy, but also making the return and make a decision. Is there a technique that's different off the foot when you're dropping the ball onto your foot to punt it on a touch punt as opposed to a boomer where you're punting from your own end zone and you're trying to stick it maybe in, you know, on the 20-yard line on the other side of the field? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you obviously have to take some off it or put more under it or different things so it doesn't go for a touchback. You also, if you're backed up, you might hit a different sort of punt, one that's more sort of about like distance or hang time and rather like precision. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's just depending on where you are, you sort of try to find that, yeah, that sort of, that stroke that sort of allows it to go, you know, around the eight or nine. And where do you develop that control? I mean, obviously in practice, but this is something that you developed in the league or something you developed in high school or college coming into the league? Yeah, I think it's probably from playing Aussie rules back mm-hmm. home. It's You have to sort of wait passes because, like, in Australian rules, you pass by punting and, like, you just score goals by punting and stuff like that. But for you to pass by punting, you need to be able to wait the ball, um you know, work on your touch, and that sort of translates to inside 50 punting. Is it about where you put it on your foot, or is it more about your leg speed? You know, like a fat, like a pitcher who throws a changeup will try to have the same arm angle, but maybe different arm speed. I think for, like, just a regular end-over-end, end, it's just more speed, mm-hmm. foot speed. Um, if you're hitting a different type of ball, like maybe like a banana ball or something slightly different, then it's about like contact point and stuff like that. Game day, who do you want to converse with? Are you conversing with your snapper? Are you conversing with your gunners? Who, who like getting ready to punt, not necessarily when you're walking out there, but between series, who do you want to, who do you got to coordinate with? Um, I try not to think too much about, you know, throughout the whole game, like, you know what I'm, what sort of punts I'm hitting because every scenario is different. So I just sort of I'll talk to like Pep and Jake and stuff hanging out on the sideline. Other than that, when it's coming up to a pun, it's like I have my own thing that I'm focusing on, and Schneids and Pep and like George and everybody has their own thing they're going through. So I sort of just focus on what I'm doing, and I'm normally 15 yards back. So like, you know, Schneids will talk to the boys. We run out there, and I'm already you know back. We're waiting to punt sort of thing. You're talking about Schneider. You're talking about Schneider, the special teams coordinator. Yeah. What have you been able to learn from him? He's a veteran. He's considered to be one of the most respected special teams coaches in the league. What what tricks of the trade or what, what makes him the special coach that he is? Uh, I think he's, I mean, specialist is a pretty, like, it's a pretty mental position. You know, you get maybe one play every 20 or 25 minutes. So, um He's sort of, he's a pretty laid back, relaxed guy. So in a position where it's sort of like, it's a pretty like mental game, he allows us to just sort of do our own thing. Um, which for me has sort of helped like, help me like relax and sort of just not try to do something that I, you know, necessarily is sort of outside my game and just allows me to play how um, I'm comfortable. When you go out on the field, any field, whether it be here at Levi's or at the Link Sunday, what is your pregame ritual? What are you, what are you testing? Are you testing wind patterns? Are you looking at weather reports? Or are you looking at the turf? What are you doing in the pregame to get yourself ready? Uh, I mean, I'll take in consideration the wind and weather a little bit, but I also don't like, you know, changing everything up and. Uh, focusing too much on like outside sort of factors um, so 
you know, I'll hit some punts and just see like going this way, what flies better and different things that'll probably work throughout the day. But I try not to look into it too much. You probably spent a lot of time with Jake because he's the kicker and you're the punter. Yep. Both you guys were high picks. He was a third round pick, you were a fourth round pick. Do you guys ever have any dialogue about about the expectations of the pro game when you are a high pick as a, as a specialist? Yeah, I mean, there's always gonna be like outside noise when you're like a draft pick and a specialist, you're sort of expected to get out there and you know perform straight away. Um, so yeah, it can be hard. Like there's other kickers that are free agents that are like, hey, if it works out, it works out. Like hopefully you do good. Jake has that like, hey, you need to perform right now. So um, yeah, we'll just talk about, and I'm like, my advice is you don't choose where you get drafted. Like you deserve that from your college, from your college performances. And um, now it's just, you do what sort of makes you feel comfortable. Don't worry about the outside noise. Tell us a little bit about him because he, he's, he's, I've talked to him a couple times and he just seems like a real grounded, solid personality. You've probably spent a lot of time with him. Give us some insight into uh, Jake. Uh, he's super relaxed, soft-spoken. Um, I think doesn't think too much, which, which is a great sort of uh, attribute for a kicker. Um, just sort of trusts his leg and trusts sort of his ability and um, yeah, super relaxed, down to earth, cool dude dab in the room. You're getting a lot of guys on special teams making plays. Luter made a phenomenal play yeah. running down Eskridge. Um, Womack made a phenomenal play catching your punt, throwing it back to Robbie Bell, mm -hmm. uh, Ronnie Bell, I should say. Um, this is a total team effort, and, and this team's invested in some special teams players. This is a this is this. Would you say this is the best top to bottom special teams unit you've had here in San Francisco so far? Uh, I don't really, I don't really think about that too much. But I mean, yeah, we've got some good players. Like, unfortunately, Geo got injured, but then there's like Flan and Burks and Charlie, and I think we've got a pretty good team. Um, yeah, it's hard to. I haven't really thought about it, but yeah, I, I trust the punt team for sure. A couple last ones before we let you go. Um, you've been in this, on this team for a number of years. What would it mean to you to make the Pro Bowl this year? Have you thought about that? And It's an individual deal, and this is a team sport, but what would that mean to you? Yeah, I think that's all stuff that's sort of, you know, I'm one of 11 guys out there, so if that's the case, it's, you know, I, I owe a lot of that to my punt team. Um, I would be ecstatic to sort of get recognised as, you know, one of the better punters. Um, but yeah, I try not to think about it. That's sort of stuff that's basically out of my control and I just try to do what I can for the team. Hey, uh, big game this weekend. And give me your thoughts on, on Brock. I mean, he's he seems like uh, that throw that he had to Ayuk in the fourth quarter was just a big time throw. Um, it seems like the guys in this room have tremendous confidence in him. You've been around him a lot the last couple of years. What do you think of him as a young player? Uh, I don't know too much about football, but he's winning us games and <laughs> throwing some incredible passes and he's a down to earth dude. So I'm all for it. I love being part of the Brock Purdy story. Last one, Eagle fans are verbal, man. Uh, and as the punter and the kicker, you guys are standing there on the sidelines. You, you, are you going to get an earful? Are you prepared? Did you get an earful last year in Philly during the championship game? What do you think of their fan base? Yeah, I remember someone was trying to sort of bully me because they had a photo of me cuddling with my dog on Instagram. Okay. They're like, you got to go home and cuddle your dog. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't. Like, uh, it's sort of funny. I'll, yeah, but n I've never really had anything that's like, you know, outright, Vulgar, outrageous okay. or anything. But it's all just banter, nothing crazy. Yeah. Hey, good luck on Sunday. Appreciate your time. Thank you.